Congratulations on Maniac, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. What do you guys love about episodic storytelling? I, I think that Netflix in particular gives you a chance to, to tell that kind of combination of a serialized drama with, with these uh, stories that land along the way. And in this show in particular, where we were going to, to different worlds, um, we had a chance to sort of do episodic stories and then back at the lab with Dr. Mantle Ray, kind of this, this through line that was continuing a long story that was happening there. It's also that thing where you, you get, I mean, as opposed to, you know, 22 episodes of television where you feel like, you know, the writers can really get backed into a corner as far as, wow, you know, it, there's, I've, I've done both and in, in, you know, sort of network, you know, where you're really cranking them out. Yeah. Um, you can sort of feel that lag, you know, around episode 13, There's 14, the where the writers are looking tired and, and the, the storylines are, are <laughs> reflecting that, you know. They're just like, let's try this. Let's try Maybe this. Who cares? Like, what's the finale? We can get one out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, not with this, thankfully. Um, did you have Justin in mind when you were writing this, having worked with him before? I was thinking about Justin I, and because I knew that for someone that to play Dr. Mantle they were going to have to be able to kind of do these gigantic comic uh, broad moments, but, but do it with a core of emotion. It's a really hard range to find in people. And um, he's, he's hilarious in Leftovers. Hilarious. <laughs> and so, so we knew that. <laughs> I just didn't know if he could do the emotional side. Yeah. Mm. The emotional stuff was tough for me because I don't want to access that very easily. <laughs> uh, what about the part made you say yes? Uh, a couple. The main thing was that the the team that was assembled, Patrick, who obviously I knew from Leftovers, right. and Carrie, who I'd known just socially, who I liked very much and got along with, and uh, uh, and Emma and Jonah, I really you know wanted to work with. So the team was the the first thing, and then the second part was the the character wasn't you know sort of you know set in stone. It was all the lines were there, the the plot was there, the sort of the uh, you know what, what happens to him was there, but. Uh, in conversations with them, they were very, you know, forthright about saying, like, look, this is sort of a jump ball. We can, we can create a character, you know. And so we had sort of longer discussions about, you know, um, what would be the sort of most fun way to play him. You know, he's, he is sort of this guy, you know, because we spend so much time, obviously, you know, in these other uh, realms or dreamscapes, um, that when you pop out, there's this sort of maybe just chance to have a little more fun with the character who, who lives in this laboratory. He definitely had some fun with it. Um, yeah. The show speaks to itself to complicated relationships. How did you invoke that in your performance like that? Well, when yeah. Sally showed up. When Sally right? showed up, I mean, that's, I mean, she that's like had such a, an amazing, <laughs> like, she had yeah, definition of complicated, and she also um, immediately, the first time, first moment I met her, she launched, oh, come here, and she gave me this big hug, and she's like, I have so many ideas about how poorly I raised you and, and you know, that you probably slept in bed with me for way too long and, the, you know, she had just all these great sort of... A lot of backstory yeah, ideas. Yeah, sort of backstory ideas that totally dovetailed with mine that, that I, were similar ideas that I had as well. Um, you know, and he also is this... I just like him because he's this very vain man who's constantly trying to present strength, but it always comes across as the opposite, <laughs> you know, even when he's being the most sort of strong and... Whatever it always yeah. reads as weakness, you know, um, and I just really like that about him. You he's know? a mess from from the second yeah. he's on camera to the end of the show. <laughs> he's arguably uh, the yeah. most damaged character, and the person, by the way, who should be least in charge of fixing people's <laughs> brains because if his brain is the model for normalcy that he's trying to achieve, then then uh, no one is in good hands when they're with him or being, you know, administered by him.